Afrika, oder? Silber! We are today here in the Renner Institute and we are opening the Forum on Migration and Development which will take part on the 14th and 15th of March 2013 in Vienna. The Forum is organized by the Africa for Netzings Platform of Austria, the Vienna Institute for International Dialogue and Cooperation, Südwind and the Karl Renner Institute. The aim of the conference is to bring together people from different countries in Europe to discuss the issue of migration and development as well as to develop ideas for new projects. It is thanks to the initiative of the African networking platform AVP that we are meeting here today and tomorrow to discuss and rethink the role of diaspora and migrant organizations in development cooperation. The forum, which comprised of the international conference Developing Development and the partnership fair Bridging the Gap, gathered 180 experts in the area of migration and development. Diaspora experts of the Africa-Europe platform from 25 different European countries shared their experiences and possibilities for cooperation between diaspora and development cooperation. During the opening session, Hans-Peter Glanzer from the Austrian Federal Ministry for European and International Affairs emphasized the great importance of the year 2013 for the involvement of the migration and development agenda. Over the recent years, we have observed a considerable change in thinking about the development migration nexus. There is a shift from a more problem pessimistic uh, approach to a greater recognition of the contribution of migration to poverty reduction and development. I only would like to mention the remittances, which constitute in many countries a significant portion of their GDP. The UN High-Level Dialogue on International Migration and Development, which takes place this year, will provide a strong momentum at global level, and the forum Migration and Development addresses the key issues, which will also be in the spotlight of the upcoming debate at UN level. The European Union has elaborated as a policy framework the global approach to migration and mobility. The latest conclusions of the Council of the European Union on this global approach from May last year identify a number of key challenges for enhancing the positive development effects of migration, among others, mainstreaming migration to national development strategies and the better use of the potential of diaspora and migrant organizations for the development of their countries of origins are mentioned. Helmut Hartmeier, representing the Austrian Development Agency, identified that asking critical questions is the factor for success of a conference. And all participants agreed at the end of the second day that the right critical questions have been asked for a solid base for the manifesto. 90% of migration is caused by the search for jobs. A globalizing economy has made the job market more flexible and migration has grown in number. Uh, as Ambassador uh, Glanzer already pointed out. However, in the, in the recipient countries, like Austria, uh, migrants, especially from southern and, and eastern regions, uh, belong to the most vulnerable uh, groups. They lack legal security and uh, they suffer from bad working and living conditions. Yet, migration is also seen as a chance this concerns the questions of uh, remittances, it concerns uh, the support uh, by migrants and migrant communities for their projects in their countries of origins, it concerns the know-how transfer, it concerns uh, the good practice programs uh, from other countries, uh, how to involve the expertise uh, of migrants and how to strengthen uh, their capacities. So what is obvious, uh, the issue of migration moves along a constant brink, the brink of migration control on the one hand, a very tricky and sensitive issue, and the promotion uh, of development on the other hand. Numerous international organizations and tackle this issue of migration and also development institutes, development institutions, organizations, public as well as within civil society, are challenged uh, to be aware uh, of the problems, their underlying causes, and to find possible uh, solution. Migration and development is an international phenomenon. 
which goes beyond national structures, national borders. Like any other global issue, it asks for international solutions, so it's great to have an international conference uh, in this respect. However, these international solutions must be embedded uh, in local and regional realities. Some of these, I will not deny, even if they may sound selfish, migrants strengthen our society, they make an elderly community younger, they enrich it with language and culture, they open it up for links with faraway regions, and they create partnerships in the field of development and also business. It is the task of development, communication and education and global learning to raise critical awareness, to ask critical questions, to promote creativity to new solutions and to close gaps between communities, migrant communities, development communities, other political communities which may sometimes work too much apart. It is a challenge for the state how to best support initiatives of migrant communities and I hope this conference will give some answers. Let me conclude what I regard as overarching important. It is the promotion and acknowledgement of intercultural dialogue. The fight against prejudices, against bias and racism is a long and hard one, but mutual learning can help to win it. A special motivation for my organization's call for proposals was to involve diaspora organizations with their specific knowledge and experiences. The cooperation of relevant Austrian NGDOs like the Vienna Institute or Südwind, uh, together with the African Networking Platform in this conference and beyond, uh, is an example of good practice and raises hope for the future. William Carlton Eco, US ambassador to Austria, highlighted that the USA is a country of immigrants, which distinguishes it from other countries in the world. And that has been the single most powerful defining feature of our country and our economic success and you know, virtually everything else that you can say about the United States. We're a very diverse country and that diversity is the source of our strength. He stressed that migrants' engagement strengthens the development of the residents' countries as well as of the countries of origin. As part of the U.S. approach towards development, diaspora engagement features high on the agenda. Today, U.S. development agencies think beyond remittances and view immigrants and their descendants as partners in this process. In 2010, President Obama issued the, quote, new approach for advancing, to advancing development, end quote, which identified partnerships with diaspora, diaspora communities as a central component of our government's development strategy. Let me give you a couple of examples. The State Department launched the Global Partnership Initiative to reach out to diaspora communities. The President's emergency plan for AIDS relief included Ethiopian, Ethiopian diaspora healthcare professionals as volunteers in Ethiopia. USAID, the US Agency for International Development, launched a platform to work with migrants and promote migrant social entrepreneurship. Now these programs all make good business sense. And the lesson to take from leaders in business is that anyone who doesn't recognize the business case for migration and the global use of talent will not be in business very much longer. And I think, again, that's part of what defines our country, this, this attitude, this concept. And when you see immigrant communities in the United States and how much they still carry a love and a passion for their country of origin and a desire to help in that country, I think that's the core of how we're able to, to provide development assistance to those countries more effectively. Barbara Prammer, president of the National Council in Austria, identified the need to bridge the gap between diaspora and other development actors, and criticized that many projects are still often done for 
and rarely with diaspora associations. The role and relevance of diaspora communities for development is an important one, we all know. This is highlighted by the sheer size of the remittances to their countries of origin, which exceed the global official development assistance by far. In 2012 alone, according to the World Bank, 406 billion US dollars were transferred to the countries of the South and East. This number is growing and growing in contrast uh, to the official development assistance by OECD countries having decreased for the first time in 2011. Of course, not all of these remittances are used for social, educational and other areas relevant for development, but large parts are used to improve the living conditions of the families in the home countries and create posit positive uh, lasting effects. Wir wissen, dass viele Menschen, die ähm, in, zum Beispiel in Österreich leben und aus Staaten, die Entwicklungshilfe, Unterstützungen kriegen, kommen, dass es da auch darum geht, dieses Geld, dieses, das direkt fließt, also von Familie zu Familie, auch mit in Erwägung zu ziehen, wie kann das auch zweckgesteuert äh, werden, wie kann man sozusagen die Erfahrungen, die daraus auch entstehen, mit berücksichtigen. But the role of um, diaspora communities is and must be more than just sending back money. And I think this is the main uh, purpose and the main goal in that conference. It can be very productive to integrate people of their respective countries of origin in projects of development cooperation, not only to listen their ideas, but to let them have a say, to learn from the experiences and to use their expertise uh, and knowledge to let them be a bridge between their new and their old home country. Hence, the developmental potential of international migration has become increasingly important and migrants have emerged as key actors for development. Also, they are more and more considered to be crucial cooperation partners, joint projects between diaspora and development organizations are so far very rare in Austria. The partnership between the VIDC and AVP in the framework of the COMID initiative is one of the very few examples in the Austrian context where the African diaspora is acknowledged as an equal partner. We have to strengthen the cooperation between development NGOs, migrant organizations and communities. One of the tools for bridging the gap between diaspora and development actors is surely tomorrow's partnership fair, I think a splendid idea, in order to promote learning and information sharing. Before I start, I want to underline an important fact. There have been many international conferences, but it is the first time that it is that international. We have experts from many European countries, including the non-EU countries, Norway and Switzerland. There are representatives from Denmark, Portugal, Chypre, Ireland, Pays-Bas, Malta, République Tchèque, Luxembourg, Espagne, Grèce, Suède est en route, <laughs> Slovénie, Belgique, France, Suisse, Finlande, le Royaume-Uni. On peut les applaudir. The great attendance at this conference of diaspora and other development actors 
convinces me to say that the time for an equal partnership and shared responsibilities between diaspora, governments and other stakeholders has come, said Alexis Neuberg from the AVP in his introductory speech. Our network has organized this conference together with our partner VIDC. We try to analyze all important issues concerning our development. Now we are going further down the road to think the whole process over. We invited the president of the Austrian parliament, the representative of the ministry, the representatives of Sudvin and VIDC. The question is, can we induce change? And if we have an ambassador in our country, yes, we can say, we can. yes, we can. Gabriel Fall, representing the UK-based African Foundation for Development, Afford, asked, is it effective and is it efficient to get the diasporas involved in this? And the argument is yes. Due to two reasons. Firstly, diaspora associations achieved a lot without institutional support, which gives one an idea on the potential diaspora associations still have. And secondly, the involvement of diaspora associations in development fosters innovation, as they apply new ways of thinking about development. Therefore, cooperation between the diaspora and other development actors needs to be sought, while genuine partnership can make a significant difference in three main areas. Employment of diaspora in development institutions, funding of diaspora organizations that work for international development, and representation of diaspora institutions in policy formulation. Thank you, Jibril, for this uh, quite well-structured analysis on uh, what we have to gain in investing in the diaspora. Merci, Teclair. Merci à vous, les organisateurs. Brice Monou from the Forum des Organisations de Solidarité Internationale Issue des Migrations, Forum, based in France, called upon governmental development agencies and other development actors to treat the diaspora as equal partners in development cooperation projects. Don't do it for us, do it with us. She also criticized that the side of the migration and development coin, where migrants also contribute to the development of their host countries and not only their origin countries, is not seen. Thus, a change in the perception of migrants and their contributions is needed. But she also urges diaspora actors to find creative ways to get heard by traditional development actors and governments. If you knock on a door and it doesn't open, knock on the window. Because on the grassroots level, we know how it works. I speak about social cohesion, be it on the national level, be it on the European level. We want to participate in development, not just talk. Be active, have a partnership. When we meet and start the dialogue, we will have constructive ideas. The dream, if you work in migration and development, is to allow migrants to become actors of public policies. Because only then we will be able to not only speak for us, but speak for everyone. And it won't be the Africans and the Europeans, but all of us together. Je vous remercie. Thank you for these very concrete examples and proposals. Now it is time for discussion for questions and answers, for proposals and comments. Mr. Fall, he talked about the nostalgia of uh, the diaspora going back and investing back home and things like that. So I wanted to, to you to touch on also on the, on the matter of immigration, migration, diaspora, and also stability back home. Because as we know, there are a lot of places in Africa where yes, it's still unstable, and most people feel the, the need of not investing there because of the instability, and we cannot go away from that. So I, want, I wanted you to, to elaborate on that, and what can we, people from the diaspora, work in instability? And also in some countries, in election period, we see that uh, the direct investment goes down, the remittances also go down, 
and a lot of investment in this time of instability goes down. So we as African, the diaspora, what can we do to play part in the, in the stability? Instability by itself is not a barrier to investment. It sounds odd, but it's true. Instability by itself, even war by itself, is not reason for lack of investment. The question is, what type of investment? Because in fact, sometimes why war continue for a long time, that's what's called the economics of war. It has nothing to do with the original dispute. It's about the economics, because it's very profitable to be in war. Now, so what we need to look at, again, development actors, including the diaspora, is just as the mercenary and the bad investor is looking at an unstable situation and saying, what can I invest to make it more unstable and get more? The diaspora need to look at an unstable situation and say, what can I do to diffuse? And in Somalia, we've seen experiences. Before even Western Union went in, Dahapsil was there. Dahapsil is a money transfer business that effectively ran a banking and financial structure in a country not only that didn't have a government or a state, but during the very heart of the most violent disturbances. And the Hapsil was able to do that, not only out of patriotic duty, but for profit. But some would say for good type of profit. And today, they still operate there as an important institution. We are diaspora here and we want to help Africa. But the problem, we have dictators there and the government of Europe are working with the dictators when there is uranium or petroleum and so on. So where is, uh, what, what are uh, the platform, like Europe platform do with the politician here to let them don't work with our dictators? All of those problems and many more are all true and complicated. The point about development activists is they are not interested in the full reflection of problematics. We're interested in what can I do, however small, as a solution. And this is not a trivial point or a trivial attitude because those small points of positive solution even in the face of these huge problems like terrible dictators and border problems can still lead to enduring solutions. Based on the expert contributions and the recommendations, which were identified during four workshops in the course of the conference, a manifesto setting out key principles for how other development actors should work in partnership with the African diaspora for a sustainable development in Africa and Europe will be developed. The event was actually very successful and it brings different diverse groups from NGO, from ministerial level and then also diaspora organization within uh, European Union. We are very happy and we would like to see much more of such activity. We are much more very happy of, with all the events organized throughout the whole week and it was very professionally organized. Uh, you were much more given a lot of information, network access, and you look forward to welcome uh, the group also in upcoming event for uh, European Diaspora Platform, which will be happening in the Netherlands. We have shown through this network that it is necessary to be part of the global uh, development that is going on, and it's also a sign to play our own role in the development projects that is going on. That is to show that it is necessary to bring in uh, the people in the diaspora when it comes in terms of uh, uh, development, be it social development, be it uh, political development, or be it uh, funding freedom of speech and education. I think we use this opportunity to thank uh, all the organizations that have assisted us in getting this uh, seminar and workshops through. I think the manifestos that will come out will, show, will go a long way to assist the individual organizations in their local areas uh, in their work 
to make sure at the end we have a mutual understanding and a progressive uh, partnership in development uh, projects. We are encouraging other individuals wherever you are, get yourselves organized, uh, get yourself your ideas and get in contact, be part of the network. At the end, the conference and the partnership there was a real success. There are so many organizations doing interesting projects, especially from the diasporas, and we see that there's a real need, but also a real hope, and also a situation where the diaspora is now not asking for support. They say, hey, we are part of the development world, and you have to recognize this. And this recognition, and this is the interesting thing, took place in several countries of Europe. That's what we learned in the conference from our colleagues from the Africa Europe platform, uh, who presented projects in Netherlands, in the UK, in France. And we learned that in those countries, they take diaspora engagement very serious in development cooperation. It's now on us in Austria that we go with the spirit, that we also encourage develop, uh, diaspora organizations to take part in development cooperation, but also that we should not forget to give our pressure to development agencies, to the government, that they should take diasporas serious. I think in the, in the partnership fair we saw how many ideas diaspora organizations have for partnerships with the NGO world. The NGO world normally in Austria is quite white. And we have to change this. This is something also we learned at this conference. We have to encourage them actively to take part in our campaigns. We should see them also as people working in our organizations. This was a strong message from the diasporas and I think we will continue with our work and we will see the results almost in one year, maybe a little bit earlier, but we don't give up. Where you too tight, 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 baby, no.